And then I realised that I cannot raise my arm. I have to just cocoon up and just survive until the next morning. We have five months to the wedding and I have a lot of things not planned yet. I'm, I'm very anxious. Am I not able to do this? Maybe I just wasn't cut out for this. I found my umbilical cord in a jolly bee ang pao. Okay, Jared host. <laughs> <laughs> Jared, can do intro? Yeah, we're All catching right. up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you right. sound exactly yeah. like him. He found a white Oh my... Like that? Like that? <laughs> yeah, do, do that. <laughs> he like, do his head out. All right. So, and if you think this is the beginning, this is your, your daily catch-up. No, daily catch-up. Yeah. Catch For the two weeks that you were gone, where were you? Explain. So I went to do Everest Base Camp, oh. which was like an adventure that I initiated six months prior. Randomly, because I was watching somebody else's vlog, Harold Balder, shout, shout out, out. <laughs> travel vlogger. But yeah, I think for the longest time, right, like I felt like my life was a bit stagnant mm. and lacking something that would take me out of my comfort zone. Mm. So I just posted a, a IG story saying like, hey, anybody want to go make it a fun trip? Let's see what happens. And then a friend of a friend had already booked the trip, uh, which was happening in April. And so through that connection, then I was I joined that group and then a friend of mine also joined me. Oh, yeah. this is insane! So uh, coming bang. from an introvert, like you just like. But introversion is a resting system. It's an energy system. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not a social system. Yeah. Ah, my social ability is fine. <laughs> it's not about the ability. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. Actually, yeah. honestly, right? Yeah. No, but I think you can choose when to on. Uh. Like, of course, like, everybody treats, can, right? This kind of trips, I think you were like extra. Yeah, on. yeah. The reason why I chose to join this friend was also because the 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 lead guide for this trip, right? is uh, this guy called Ku Sui Chow. Mm -hmm. And he's the first Singaporean to ever summit Everest. Oh. At the age of 34, if I'm not wrong. All yeah. the way to the top. Yeah. So All the top. way. Wow. 8,800 plus meters above sea level. Wow. Madness. Yeah. So I remember like you, we, we were talking briefly about this at lunch, but like you were saying how this trip, you expected it to like change your life in some way or like at least some outlook, but then you felt like it it didn't. What was your expectation going into it? This adventure is, I would think that it's somewhat of a very physically demanding yeah. uh, experience. Mm. La. So, mm. and then also the fact that it's, you're getting to like, you're basically going to be part of a, a, a minority or a very small group of people in the, in the world mm. that will be basically the closest to like touching the sky. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, other than that, nobody else really. Then there's that even smaller fraction who submit, submit and get go to those mm. peaks, right? So I was thinking that like it will really blow my fucking mind, you know, like something that mm. I've really never like. Right. Like what is this feel, new oh. feeling? You know, like that. you open your your arms when you finally reach base camp, that kind. Then you feel the wind and the snow. <laughs> then you're like, yes, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> funny, like, I, I I would imagine that if I climb like a mountain, ma. Like yeah. you know when you reach yeah. the top, there is like. Fulfillment. Yeah, correct. Like it would have opened my eyes to some new perspective mm. of the world and all that. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, and then it didn't. Like, like it, it did, but a little bit only. Was it because people told you that it was going to be life changing? People write books about this. Shit, like it changed yeah. their life and all that kind of nonsense. Right? Then I'm like, wow, that was what I was expecting. Mm. Right. But in the end, it's like, hmm, I just did my Richie like or Bukit Timah Hill like ten days in a row. So it's too like, easy for you, lah. <laughs> you, okay, so there were definitely difficult parts of it, and I think like the the biggest challenge right was um altitude sickness, right. which is something that mm. everybody talks about. Um, and so the actual experience was not physically demanding at all. At you, all. It's eh? Literally oh. every day you are just walking. The thing is that you don't need to go fast. Nobody goes fast. Oh, oh. slowly, slowly. Yeah, you just take your time. Everybody takes their own time. And you just patiently get from point A to point B. Three to six kilometers, sometimes 10 kilometers a day. Oh. And it's divided. So it's two halves. You have breakfast, then you, you, you start your trek. Then you have lunch somewhere, mm. rest, and then you continue again for the second half. Latest, like 5 p.m. like that, you kind of reach your destination already where you're going to sleep for the night. Lame question, but on the way there, right, got, got internet, not? got 4G, 5G. So I but was very stressed about this, right? Then after that, right, <laughs> they, basically at the beginning, they will tell you that you will lose connection after day four. Mm. <laughs> Then I was like, oh, really? Uh, stress. <laughs> <laughs> Sien, how am I going to take that? myself here? You know? <laughs> Tell people where I'm at, you know? EBC is very touristy and is getting more and more developed. And so it's improved. The, pro the products and services are improving all the way. Mm. I'm also paying for one of the better travel packages uh, with this company called uh, Seven Summits. Shout outs. Yeah. When you go to the village, right? I'm staying at like probably the best lodge there is. Right. Mm. Yeah. The best wow. food, the best router. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
okay, 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 okay. So you every lot you go, you will pay for internet. Oh, you okay. pay for Wi-Fi. Mm. Um, and as you get further up, the it's, prices keep uh, increasing. Mm. It's the same for your your food, your water, your showers, your internet. Those are the main things that you pay for. Okay. So at the beginning of the track, maybe you pay, you don't really need to pay because there's still network, mm. but maybe the earlier stages, you pay maybe $5 for internet for 24 hours. But towards the end, it's about double or sometimes even a bit more than that. Okay, la, so it's as yeah. how comfortable you want it to be, then you just pay appropriately. But for those people who can live without internet, live without shower, live without coke, then actually it's quite okay. Yeah, la. that was the situation. Also. So even at the final um, accommodation, which was like um, about three hours away from EBC, mm. I still got Wi-Fi. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah, you were replying our group. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. for it was some reason you But there will be gaps so yeah. you have just no no connection or for uh. like overnight, suddenly like, mm. okay, so it's them cold there and most of the stuff is solar powered, which means that at night, right, when they finish, right, <laughs> you just nothing. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So you do it the next morning where there's enough energy uh, like power, generated and stored yeah. from mm. the, the sun, right? Then you can charge your power bank, for example. Mm. Uh, uh. Yeah. Okay lah, but oh. at least like you don't need aircon because like cool. Bro, I tell you, it's the f***ing opposite. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah, you need, you need a heater. heater. So, need heater. so in all the lodges, right, at night, the area is so high up, right, these mountainous regions, right, it's so f***ing cold. Oh. It's cold to the point where What's you have a bed, right, um, oh. and you have to put a sleeping bag that's minus zero, zero to minus 20 degrees back, and then you have to wear your down jacket and layer up and then crawl inside and then like oh that. my god. Oh, to sleep. But sometimes in the middle of the night, it get, uh, it, maybe you, because down jacket, the way it works is that over time it gets yeah. warmer yeah. and warmer and warmer because it's using your body heat, right? It's storing that. So yeah, sometimes it will get a bit hot. Lah, but for the most part, it's freaking freezing. The, the, the temperature at night ranges mm -hmm. from maybe 10 degrees down, uh, downwards. Oh. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. It's the wind. Lah. It's, the wind. it's the wind that kills you. Lah. The wind kills you uh, along the walk. But right. in the in the accommodations, in the lodges, there's no heating system. Mm. There's no weatherproofing. The only place that you get any warmth is in these dining halls that every lodge has. And they have just like one heater in the <gasps> middle, like a traditional, those yeah. fire, stove. Fire. It's like a stove. Like, then they just put the, the yak shit inside. Right. Mm. And then they, they burn it as fuel. Oh. Yeah. Hey, for a complete noob, right? So like, I don't know, like in terms of context, how high is summit? How high is base camp? Because to me, right, I hear base camp, I think foothills. Yeah, yeah. But it's high. So base camp is 5,300, if I'm not wrong, around there. Huh? Uh, elevation. And then the summit is 8,800 something. Oh, so it's like halfway there already. <laughs> Only. <laughs> the, but they call it base but camp. But that's the hard part. Oh. The second half from base camp is the most difficult part. Yeah. Oh. It's crazy. And at some point, you cannot even breathe on your own. You need like oxygen tanks and shit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you need a whole team to carry everything up and move to the, the deeper base camps and all that. Oh. Wow, I think base camp, the branding doesn't do the climbers justice. It's not, yeah. it's not base. Eh? It's like, it's, it's mid midway point equally as hard. Really, really. Mm. It's, it's the furthest point that I believe you can go without any real training. Right. After that, I think you, you need like mountaineering skills. You need to know how to use the equipment. You have to put on different kinds of mm. gear because the, the terrain changes. Right. So there's ice that you need to scale. There's there's like um, snowy paths and uh, that you need to cross and all that kind of stuff also. Mm. And you need to know how to use ropes and, and scale like oh, basically almost vertical walls and whatnot. Do but you plan to do that? that? No. That's something else completely. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now I really yeah. must train quite long, right? Yeah. Hey, but you did train, right? For your one, like train a bit. Yeah, but my training is very simple. It's just... Every weekend for three months, I just mm. go to Bukit Timah Hill. Then I find the longest staircase and I just go up and down like 10 times or like over the course of two hours, mm. how many times I can. Uh. You think that helped you? I you? almost sounded Malaysian. <laughs> how many times <laughs> I can. Uh. <laughs> yeah, sometimes think, I... <laughs> you think we can? Like if we just go now, no training. Oh yeah, so, so, so to get back to the point, right, is that physically it's completely not demanding. The, the part that tests everyone, and you will not know one, because uh, you can be extremely physically fit and it doesn't matter, mm. is the altitude. Mm. How your right. body adapts to altitude. Right. And a lot of the times, like the group that I went with was mostly all older. They were like 50 to oh, 60 years old, go, that kind. Oh, yeah. Shit. The youngest was my friend who was 27 or 28. Yeah. Mm. He was the one that cannot the worst. Oh, no. Even oh. though he's the youngest and the, and the like, for, I would argue the fittest. Lah. Your body is unable to adapt and adjust to, to the altitude levels. Mm. And and what that is, is that the, I believe it's the oxygen is is getting less. Lah. The air is getting thinner yeah. as you go higher. Okay. So can your body adapt for you to then take in enough oxygen to continue functioning? So you're measuring like SpO2. Yeah. So okay. every day at night, we will have to test with, a, with oh. an oximeter yeah. to oh. see what our oxygen levels are at and yeah. what our heart rate is at. Symptoms are varying for all individuals. Um, I think for the at the fourth night, 
some people were, were starting to feel sick and vomiting. Oh. Some people were losing their appetites. Like for me personally, I lost my appetite and I was feeling feverish. Oh, so you couldn't wow. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you say wow. like you only eat one grape for one week or something like that. One huh? week? No lah, hey, oh. hey, don't any of this my story. <laughs> yeah, one yeah. grape for one like, week. Like, like, one you only eat one <laughs> a fruit, he like No, so the first, the... the very first night that I got altitude sickness, right, I, oh, and of all nights, that night I ordered apple pies, ah. Shit. What got apple <laughs> pie in the mouth, eh? It's big. <laughs> wow. It's a pie. <laughs> it's not it's the McDonald's. It's yeah. a <laughs> Like pie. Really yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. So I ordered like a noodle soup or something like that mm. and an apple pie and I couldn't touch it. Like oh. I could not touch it. When I came back down to, to dinner, right, my lips were purple. Oh, I was oh. pale. Then I just down there, I'm like, what is happening? Uh? Then what made you I don't know what's happening. No, you order dinner before. Oh. You order oh. your dinner at lunch. Oh. Like, like old people style. Yeah. So, <laughs> no, but the good thing is that it's so cold that the apple pie can probably last a few days. <laughs> <laughs> what's sure. funny? So, so then, then like, I was hearing of like, oh, somebody is stuck in, like not even coming down because they're just constantly having diarrhea. Ayoh. And then another person is so sick and vomiting themselves that, eh, not shitting themselves, vomiting, throwing up, mm. that they that they also cannot come down for dinner, that kind Aww. of thing. Wow. Then I'm down there trying to be like, what is going on now? What's wrong with me? So then after that, then the, the guy told me that this oh. is a symptom. Mm. Yeah. So towards the end, they serve fruits, which was great. And then I, the only thing that I was able to consume were like a couple of grapes. Mm. Yeah. And then the next morning I woke up, right? Ready to go. Ah. Like I was super like, hey, oh, okay, already. I adjusted, I, I acclimatized already. Yeah. So then I, wow, mm. okay, ah, <laughs> Then I spring up another fucking mountain. <laughs> like I, I go up another path, yeah, right? Yeah. Then I come back down. Then the same thing happened. Oh. And this would repeat itself every night until I got came back down. So nighttime rubber, but morning, okay. Yeah, so how it affects me is that the moment I finish the climb for the day, like around like, like late afternoon, right? And I get to the lodge. Then I will get hit with a high fever, uh, loss of appetite and just extremely low energy and my oxygen level will get quite low. So then after that, I have to just cocoon up in bed and just survive until the next morning. Oh. Then the next morning, then I'll have energy again. I maybe eat a couple of eggs yeah. and then I, I go already. Huh. Wow. But what, uh, what happens if someone's oxygen level is like? From, from what I understood, right? If you require oxygen, they will basically pump you with oxygen with, uh, for about 20 to 30 minutes. Oh, like they got tanks wow, there. Yeah, like, it's like a mask. Oh, oh, as in they bring tanks there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They will take it off and see whether your level stabilize, mm. where they stabilize at. If it's mm. above, then it's good. Mm. If it starts to drop again, right, then obviously there's a problem. And if it continues dropping, then... Uh, evac. Evacuation. Oh, wow. Like helicopter evac. Mm -mm. Your damn strong will say, I think the first night if I couldn't fever already, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. let's go. Evac no, evac, evac me. <laughs> so, so something that was very reassuring was that the guide was saying that take each moment as it comes and just deal with it right now. That's good life advice. Also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So even though I'm feeling like that, right, I don't know whether tomorrow I'll feel better or I will just be completely fine ready for the rest of the trip. Yeah. Yeah. Some people, maybe they make it all the way through and then suddenly just pump the oxygen level drops, right? And then that's it. Yeah. My friend was down bad, right? So I was taking care of him. People will come in to check. And every time they check, they knock on the door, I have to go and open the door. Me getting up and walking two steps to unlock the door and I sit back down, right? I'm <laughs> <laughs> for like at least a good minute to five minutes. I'm totally out of breath. And then in the middle of my sleep, there was a time where I wanted to go and wake up to check both our oxygen levels. So my alarm rings. I, I barely turn it off. And then I realized that I cannot raise my arm because, ah. because it would take so much energy out of me. Psychologically also, I'm just like almost like slightly paralyzed already. Like I know that if I leave it out, it will take so much energy. So I just couldn't do it. Like that's how bad it felt. Mm. Yeah. God. Mm. Quite scary, Wait, quite scary. Time, you like, wow, oh, I'm not gonna make it. Eh. Like I'm gonna throw already. Only the first night. Only the first night I experienced this, right? Then I was like, wow. Must pray to God already. Eh. Is it I need to get evacuated? Because at, until that point, right? everything was good. Mm -hmm. Nobody was experiencing anything yet. So that's mm -hmm. my first encounter with this. Mm -hmm. But after I realized that, oh shit, next day I'm going to bounce back, next day I'm going to bounce back, right? Then it started to, I started to realize that this is mm, the way my body adapts mm. yeah. to altitude or, or, or can't adapt to altitude and this is how I need to man manage yeah, it. Yeah. I, I know you mentioned, so like it didn't really change your mind, uh, your life or like open your eyes or anything, but it wasn't going through something like this. Yeah. Life altering or like enlightening almost. A bit lor. No lah. <laughs> so after like some deeper <laughs> reflection, maybe for me, physically challenge, physical challenges, the difficulty that I perceive it to be is here, but maybe most people perceive it to be here. So then this is not where I need to challenge myself. Hmm. But before I left for the trip, I told myself, I'm going to connect with people. I'm going to be kind and reach out to people and, and make genuine connections because that's how I believe I will experience life the most. Hmm. And so through the trip, it was me 
trying to do these things. And mm. that was where I felt the most growth. Mm. Like I would speak to a local that totally is just a random stranger on the street, just say, hey, nice tattoo. Then I just start talking to them. And then he- No, they, what was they, the conversation after that? How do you say, oh, thank you. What about you? No, Wait, so I said, oh, oh, thanks. It, then I dis- I explained oh, to him like a bit about okay, the design. Okay. La. Then, he, then he started to talk to me about like how he wants to get a tattoo. And in that little moment, I'm getting a glimpse into this world, into somebody else's worldview and their perspective. Mm. And it helps me to feel so much more connected. And also that there is a lot of positivity in this world. There's a lot of like need for us to create these moments. Prior to this, I think I, 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 I led like somewhat of a passive life and I was kind of like, very closed off for the most part. Why am I wasting time mm. with uh, such a superficial interaction? Mm. But later you realize that this is almost all that life is. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's making connections, learning about other people's culture, learning about their their life story or learning about their interests. And then like, there was this one guy that, that we are friends now on, on ah, IG, okay. right? I was waiting outside a shop for my friends to buy some stuff. Mm. He suddenly popped out of his shop and he talked to me. He said, hey, you want to come here? Where are you from? And then you want to kind of, are you from Malaysia or what? Then you want to kind of check out my, my, the stuff in my shop. Then I look at the shop and there's nothing for me to buy there. Uh. So I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm Singapore. I'm just waiting for my friends. I like, I, at first I brushed off the, the yeah, interaction. Yeah. Then suddenly he said, oh, you're from Singapore. I just went to Singapore with my father. Let me show you some pictures. Then I'm like, what? Oh, what? So cute. Why will you do that? <laughs> then he, then he take out his phone. Then he starts showing me and talking to me about his trip. Oh. Then I'm like, Oh my God, this is exactly what I should do. Mm. Yeah. This is like literally like a sign from a higher power, like forcing this interaction onto me, you know? Then I'm like, okay, let me fully engage. Mm. And so I did. And then like, wow, we start to, he start to teach me about the, the local culture. He start to help me out. And then suddenly I felt like, oh, I have a friend here. And the interesting part about it is that because the connection was so genuine, right? Like there was trust that was built. Now it feels like I have a connection to to mm. to that place. Mm. That if I need to, like later on, right, I would I, w- I would almost get scammed by another person mm. on on the streets, yeah, right? I was ask you and this person yeah. was the 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 who I could go to for help right. in that area. Yeah. Oh. So then in the end, I managed to learn about his culture, and then I I, I learned about his family, and then I bought, end up buying something that I actually wanted in his shop just to support him. I want to try it on Oliver, uh, but let me explain what it is first. So in Nepal, right, they have yeah. this traditional um, like bowls okay. that create a sound. Oh. It's like almost like a tiny gong. Oh, like, oh, like, like, the, the, like a singing Australia, bowl. The, the and the supposedly, it has the ability to, 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 to make a baby stop crying. Right. Yeah, because of the vibrations or it whatever tone is it. Yeah. Is it black and gold? There are black and gold versions, but mine was the pure gold one. Like, nice, nice. Even with this, it's like, I tell you, it's like, Harry Potter, you know, he got to choose his wand. Yeah. Then there's the wand for you, right? Uh, yeah. This one, you must go feel the different bow, then gong, 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 right? Yeah, yeah. Then you will feel that one bow, that you just... Tong. Then the perfect sound come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, have to, you have to boah around yeah, outside to keep the note going, right? This one is like, I'm not even trying, right? And I get the perfect... Wow. G sharp. Yeah, apparently oh, it helps to cleanse like r- r- rooms and areas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. Hey, you inspire me, man. Okay, sorry, but anyway, yeah, so... so no, like, like <laughs> legit, like you inspired me, like this whole this whole trip. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Shit. I was gonna say. <laughs> For this trip, mm. I think I I Thank didn't you. really care about the price. In fact, I know I was paying a premium, um, and I'll explain why it costs more. So, so if I'm not wrong, if you book a, a normal trip like through Kluk, for example, mm. it might cost you about three thousand oh, dollars. Oh, but it's everything. Um, I'm quite sure it's the the tour package. Maybe the flights are excluded. Uh, excluded mm. Yeah. And there's only one flight. If I'm not wrong, okay lah, there, there are a few, but the most likely you'll just pay SIA is about thousand plus. La. You go straight to Kamandu? Yes. Okay. Yes. So the premium that I paid was, I think the package was about maybe close to 5,000. I can't remember. Mm. Close to 5,000. And and what it includes actually, which I I only found out later, is that when you get to Everest Base Camp already, you're not going to walk back down. Yeah. Oh. That sucks. <laughs> yeah. And so there's a helicopter service oh, that will okay. take you back down, oh. all the way back down to the, the Lukla, which is like the first town they Lukla. actually go off from. And then from there, there's a, there's a it's the most dangerous airport in the world. Oh. And then the flights will take you back to Kathmandu. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So, but I was able to pay extra for a service that will really just take me helicopter all mm. the way back to Kathmandu. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so that was the premium that I paid and it's great. Yeah. yeah and the fact that this service exi- exists now also makes this whole adventure a lot more accessible for people, mm. I think. Plus yeah. you got to go with that Singaporean guy, the first scene. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Super interesting. Like just just listening to to because he's built different. Mm. Even even mentally also, I think he's a he's a whole different type of person. Like like he belongs there and you know. Right. Like he I belongs want- in these kind of spaces and this guy just living and in, in nature and connected to this and pushing yourself and challenging yourself, right? It's so interesting to get a peek into his mind. Mm. But I think 
more than that, right, was the group that I joined were these people from all over the place. Like, never have I hung out with like a bunch of 55-year-old ladies. <laughs> and my group happened to be all, all women for the oh, most part. Yeah. yeah ladies, man. So, <laughs> so they are talking to these people who have children my, like my age, oh. then giving us relationship advice and stuff. And it's, so it's, it's so funny. And and I really like that age didn't really play a major part in 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 hindering our abil- ability to connect. This this whole adventure is kind of like a, an approach to life. You're going to attempt to do something, right? Or you mm. want to attempt to do something. And so you prepare. But no matter how much you prepare, you will never fully be ready. And at some point, you just have to go. And then along the journey, that's where you learn about yourself. You learn about life, understanding more about yourself mm. and showing you where you want to go next or where you need to go next. Yeah, and this can be applied to anything in life, not just like... An it's, adventure like it's this. Like the, it's not about the destination. It's the journey. Yeah, somewhat, somewhat. But but it, but more layered, lah, I feel. Mm. Like all the steps seem to play out. Beautiful, man. You made me want yeah. to go climb the yeah. base camp, even though I'm not physically. Don't lah. <laughs> <laughs> also, right, I, I realized probably for all the old women, or like the 50 year old women, <laughs> you were probably their, in, like, their motivation because you've got like one <laughs> handsome boy here. So he said something about his friendship with the 50 year old ladies, right, that he traveled with. Very, very cute. I remember he said um, he was, when he was like, cocooned up right with his friend they all then were they were tearing eh. oh my gosh <laughs> they were tearing and they, they were like are you okay no I think like one one of them cried or two of them cried yeah or something. but it's still oh. so sweet yeah. yeah but it was so nice and then they really take care of us because we are like the youngest of the group also oh. yeah. yeah like they treat you the like the sun and my friend was like really going through it <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it does look like uh, he was going through damn it damn shake yeah. Good, good that yeah. you guys milked it. Yeah, but it was really nice. Like you can feel everybody taking care of each other. Yeah. Mm. You can feel like like anybody need this, anybody need that, let's let's help each other, let's let's do all that. And like something that I was like I said, right, consciously doing, which is just put yourself out there, try to be like acts of kindness, that kind of thing, right? So and and through this trip, I was able to exercise that a lot in many little ways. And it didn't really matter whether or not it was like received well or whatever, mm, right? Mm, it just felt yeah, good sorry. to be doing this, you know? Wow. Yeah. Okay. And so now what I'm really taking away from it is that I'm going to keep looking for opportunities to put myself in situations that are unfamiliar. Yeah. Or maybe a little bit uncomfortable because that is the fastest way for me to, to I don't want to say the word grow. To... I feel like it's the fastest way for me to learn about life life and myself yeah yeah which is growth lah. Okay, lah. <laughs> I think I think the trip changed you more than you know yeah I also think so life speaking is of a change. roller coaster speaking what yeah change? speaking of change speaking of change uh, <laughs> both of you are going through quite a lot of changes huh, in your life ah yes <laughs> Of course. I've been planning my wedding this whole year. It's, ca- it's happening end of the year. Wow. And it's extra tricky because we're planning to make it a two-parter. Wait, so what? A two-parter wedding. So party, party. A, yeah, party, oh, like party. Day, like day, and and ah, day and night. Oh. But the thing is, I, I also want to keep it budget-friendly. Oh. To so yourself. It, to myself. Mm. Yeah, very tricky, you see. So every time I finish something, right, I successfully like, you know, like, uh, sign off a, a location, for example. Then another problem comes up. Then I'm like, wow, I feel like it's a never-ending... Um, heel to conquer. Mm. Hey, mountain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Shem's way of relating. <laughs> Call back. Uh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay, wait, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. Never okay. ending many, many bum. Uh. So, a couple of questions even yes. in that short sharing. Why do you want to make it a uh, two-parter? Yeah. Oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, because, right? <laughs> wait, so it's the same day. It's just a two-parter because there's a morning and night. Yeah. That's a normal yeah, wedding. That's a normal wedding. No. Yeah. Some, people dinner, like, eh. some people like to like parents in the day, friends at night. There's also a two-parter. Go yeah, on. Yeah, two-parter. Yeah. No, but mine is like, like well, okay, it's usually okay. after party. No, la. there's, there's no but difference. mine is like a lunch and dinner. So two banquets of sort, two two Ish. meals. There are two meals. Two Got meals, it. right? Aww. Because my parents, or like at least his parents as well, they prefer the to more traditional in rooms. Oh, yeah. the tra- more traditional <laughs> wedding where where it's a Chinese yeah. cuisine, people walk in and like Okay. The tea ceremony and everything. Okay. So I want to respect that. People walk in the. Casually, yeah. Oh, got wedding happening. Uh. What's going on? Uh? <laughs> it got no, tea. I, shut up. <laughs> so I want to respect their traditions okay. also. So Good. I compromise, and Elvin and I compromise to say like, okay, we will do all those. Yeah. But then we, we won't invite our friends to this. Yeah, we will not invite our friends to this. Wait, uh, what? That's the compromise. Yeah, that's yeah. why I say two 
lunch is dinner. Yeah. So there's one for for the family. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. it's going to be a chop chop done. So you're paying for two banquets essentially. Ish, yeah. It, both in Singapore. Both in both Singapore. Both in the same location. Different location. So you don't get the package rates. Uh, yeah, I thought you trying to save money? I'm trying to save money, but then the same location doesn't make sense. I want it to be more comfy. It's like a house party almost. Oh, ah, you know. Also, really saving money. Free venue. Yeah. Yeah. Got it, got it. Got yeah. yeah. kegs of beer. And like yeah, for real. Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Really, I don't want my friends to, I also don't want my friends to think like, think about the ang pao that they have to give also. Then you need to like, right. look at it. So don't if you're a friend of Shem, there's no need to give ang pao. No, you need to give ang <laughs> But like, family be members chill be, about it. Not beware. Family Make members sure give more. Give, uh, she booked yeah, the family nice Family for your, uh, your must give. <laughs> <laughs> she purposely have a lunch. And, and and you recently also did like the pre-wedding shoot, right? Mm. Fun. Okay. <laughs> it was very, <laughs> it was very hot. It was very uh, hot. Like, but yeah. you pick your poison, right? It's either a very, very hot day or a very rainy day. Your your when you do pre-wedding shoot already, you are wearing the wedding dress, lah. Huh? No lah, you buy huh? I, okay. Yeah, I can buy anything. Oh. Can buy. This is why you shouldn't buy a pre-wedding dress from Shopee, Shopee. or Lazada online. Whatever, don't do it. Because I was thinking like, I yeah, just try la. It looks mm. so pretty at the photo. Just try How much? Me. How much? It was like 60 bucks. Okay. 50, 60 bucks. Okay. Oh, then you should so, buy block shop instead. I, I didn't I, I never eh. think. I never think. So, Shopee I, I, $60 is like scam. I no, but it looks so no. nice, you see. So uh. I ordered already, right? And then I, was, I had high hopes. Uh, one week before the 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 shoot, right? Mm. It came and then I tried to fit, right? The inner lining of the dress right, doesn't fit right. And then, right, the top, right, is just like crumpled dresses. I don't know how I explain it. The crumpled cloth. Have you on the top, tight at the bottom? Huh? No. No, I tried everything. Is really. it free size? It, it is not free size. Because <laughs> uh. free size, the dress, they will make into like uh, just a uh, whatever it's just that. <laughs> no, no it's like try your luck try your luck yeah, but yeah, was yeah. there like a size guide like when you pick got different sizes yeah 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 so I measured it is correct yeah. I don't know why they gave me the measurement of the dress the outside mm. the inner lining right it was just way smaller like right. the size smaller okay, okay. yeah so then I panicked I really was quite stressed out but Elvin right so he saw I was so stressed out right he went to google and helped me find right so he found a blog shop right and he's the building they're building their shop it's just next door here ah, okay. yeah. Yeah. yeah third theory shout out to you because they gave me a last minute. Um, I told them, like, I really need this dress. I need to work. I need to make sure it's my size. If it's not this dress, right, I don't know how to shoot really. I don't know what to wear really. Yeah, nice. yeah. So they said, don't worry. Uh, just come down. If you're wrong size, right, immediately just change. So wow. can we see the picture? Don't have. Huh? Oh, you never go in here? I thought you took the fish. But we haven't shoot. had it. Uh, the oh. Oh. Haven't, haven't processed okay, yes. it yet. Oh. So by the time this episode is out, will the picture be here? I don't know. We'll yeah, see. We'll see. Wow. Wow. Oh, yeah, okay. wow. so nice. Wait, so how much was the dress? The Tratarian? Same price, fifty dollars. Same what? The see, hell? That's why I say you should yeah, just yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. You're right. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So the advice no get from a blog shop or yeah. go yeah. see in real life. Okay, blog shop means local, so yeah, local. Okay, okay, not bad. So yeah. support local. Yeah, plus you can exchange straight away. Yeah, the <laughs> wedding is in September. Okay, we have five months to the wedding, and okay. I have a lot of things not planned yet. I'm, I'm very anxious. So, so yeah. So what no problem? One. Dan, can maybe then can you share advice. some wedding advice? You got plan? Okay. Eh? Anything that can go wrong will go wrong, so don't worry about it. No la, no la, no la, no la. I think right. <laughs> um, at the end of the day, I think it doesn't matter how early or how late you plan, mm. because for Ned and I, I, th I think I think our wedding went okay, but we only really started planning like two months or three months out. Okay, and so like, I still have two more months. So I think you don't stress so much yet. When it's really two months away, then maybe start stressing a little bit. But at the end of the day, right? When you plan everything already, the night before the wedding, right? Stop stressing already because everything that you could have thought of, you would have thought of, and anything that goes wrong, you wouldn't have thought of, so it wouldn't have mattered anyway. Just let the day happen, embrace everything. You are surrounded by people who love you, and they will help you no matter what. So you just enjoy the day. Then she step out of the car, wrong, wrong value. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <Check. Lightly laughs> <to happen, so. laughs> Never mind. If the videographer is with you, vlog it. Funny. Ah, okay, okay. okay. Don't Turn stress. Don't lemon stress into lemonade. the small things. Yeah, 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 small yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Thank you nice. for the advice. Have you picked your honeymoon place yet? Yes, we are going to Tromso. 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 Tromso? Oh, you're going to Norway. 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 Yes, Norway. <laughs> to see the uh, Aurora Borealis. <laughs> uh. Yes, correct. Ah. Ah. This year is the best Romantic. year to see. Yeah, got a lot of solar flares happening. Yeah. Mm. Hopefully, mm. hopefully we get the catch Do you know when the, the Northern Lights, right, are in uh, Australia, it's called Southern Lights? Yeah, Southern, Southern. Lights. And it's called Aurora Aur Australis. Australis, yeah. 
Who I knew? see. Southern lights. <laughs> Southern. Southern lights. Southern, right? Southern. 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 Southern lights. No, 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 no. Stick to Southern. Ah. <laughs> yeah, in a way. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, before you go, right, and I think this is a tip that for a lot of people, because so, there's a lot of people going to Norway or like Scandinavia yeah. just for the Northern lights, there's a specific camera setting, right, for you to really capture. Because ah. some people, they don't do the correct setting. Then Can they see. see in real life, it's damn clear. But and then suddenly, it's, like, it's yeah. all dark or all white. Yeah. Mm. So make sure you look it up. <laughs> I don't know what the setting Long is. Shutter. But look it up, yeah. Long shutter. Long very exposure. important. We have experience when we go to New Zealand. And also, yeah. right, something that I've, because I've never experienced for myself, but from friends who have seen the Northern Light, it's so important for you to experience it first for yourself in real life, Before. then then capture it. Because mm. a lot of people like straight want to film, then realize, actually, I didn't see it in real life. I just saw it through my camera. Yeah. Uh, Wister, so. Like many other things in life. Yeah, yeah like concerts. Like concerts. I was going to say. Hey, drinks. Yeah. Speaking of concerts, Alison. There's a lot of noise going on in Pasiris. Uh. Yeah, yeah, sorry, can I just say where? Oh, in, the yeah. in the east, in the east. In the east. Yeah, yeah. No, no There's more. a lot of heavy metal being moved. There are no more sounds no more. anymore. Huh? Done already. Yeah, all the large sounds. It's like very fast, huh? Yeah, yeah it's, it's quite fast. fast. Two weeks. So for people who don't know what the hell we are talking about, <laughs> Alice, her sir. sex life is through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm not married yet. <laughs> <laughs> so new reno, new house. I'm renovating. No, not new house. So oh, old house, new renovation. No, I just renovating my house. Renovating your house. <laughs> so her reno has already started, and now mm-hmm. it's getting into the the late stage already. Yeah, now it's just doing the floors. Mm. So now my house is essentially like. Done. freaking Done. empty because I knocked down every single wall and every single floor that has to be knocked down. Okay, okay. So it's just an empty piece of land. I also mm. know that this house is the place that you've been living in for a very quite a long time, mm. right? Uh, not your whole life, right? Uh, quite long, right? like years. 13 years plus. Yeah. Oh. And yeah. so like because of the renovation, like I did see through your stories that you were getting rid of a lot of things. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Oh like, my God. I tell you, I okay, I know that I like stuff. And yeah. I know that I like to keep stuff, right? Sentimental hoarding, value. Hoarding. Yeah, but I realise now that I really, really am a hoarder. <laughs> like, I really love to keep things because it reminds me of, like, certain moments or whatnot, right? But as I'm clearing, right, the more angrier I get <laughs> of myself because I see all the f- shit that I save. <laughs> like, just my clothes, right? I throw away the 10 huge boxes. Mm, mm. Like, I donate some, I... I still have it. Like, I still have five more boxes. And this is already after yeah. A, a yeah, that previous I, cleansings. Yeah, then I'm thinking, no, because my house, right, I always try to clean Mary my condo. room and whatever. When friends come over, then I try to like clean. Throw everything into the Yeah, but no matter how yeah. I throw, this, it's like never ending. Like the <laughs> amount of shit I have, right, I'm quite disgusted by myself that now that, now right, I don't really want to buy things. <laughs> Because I feel very disgusted. Yeah. This like, lasts for like a week. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I try, I just yeah. bought some stuff. But then, <laughs> <laughs> but then I think right, I really have a hoarding problem. So I went to like educate myself. Educate? No, I, I, I wanted to inspire myself to really be okay with throwing things away. Because even though I was angry, right? When I hold something, right? Yeah. I, yeah. I feel very like, oh, I feel very hard pain to throw it away because it costs me money. It's very tough. Or it's sentimental. Yeah. Or like, like, for example, letters. Like nobody probably yeah, remember vegetable. the letters, but when I open it, it's like ah, a good information. Well, that's you know? something that I will never throw. Eh? Letters. Same. Yeah, I will throw. I'll take picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then throw. No, but then no, the picture, but picture, then. picture, picture you right? By the time you change phone, you won't see the picture. The picture will get lost in yeah. your hundred thousand photos. Yeah. What about clouds? Okay, okay. Huh? <laughs> you never, you won't ever access that really one. Man. So what yeah. was the toughest thing that uh, you had to throw? Oh yes. Mm. Um, I think piano. Damn hard to get rid. Oh, yeah. That's what she said. The piano was one because it's... Uh, I thought like, oh, maybe I can sell it for some money, right? But then I couldn't sell it. Then I feel like it's very sad for me to just throw it away because number one, like it's a gift from my parents to me. Uh. Number two, like my mom used to play it. Ma, so oh. I have some sentimental value there. And then even though I don't touch it at all, I feel like it just looks very really nice. And when I look at it, I think of all the times like I played a piano when I was a kid. Yeah, but then in the end, I couldn't find anyone who wanted the piano because everyone these days, they also hoarder. So there's no space in their house for a piano. Same. So I was about to like, throw it away already. Then San Yong <laughs> took it. <laughs> so I gave it to our colleague. Oh. Oh. But, yeah. So I don't feel very sad that it's gone because it still mm. exists in the was world. There, was there no way to integrate it into, I was your, say. into your place? Uh, I thought about, oh, what if I just keep the piano? But mm. then the same thing will happen. Like, I feel angry that 
I just look at it for sentimental value and because I watched the video which I talked about just now. Letting go. Like I went on YouTube and then I was mm. just searching this um girl who like moved to Bali, a Singaporean who moved to Bali and then she was cleaning out her room. Then she was showing the mess she had, like she keep books when she was like primary one, she keep the little knickknacks. Uh, that, that's me. Yeah, like I keep my well. primary school uniform with all my classmate signatures on the last day, that kind of thing. Mm. Instead of thinking of like, oh, I saved this guitar because um, it reminds me of like my dad. It should be like, oh, I should actually work on talking my, to my- relationship yeah, yeah. Oh. Instead of like, I, I just keeping this guitar. It's a good point. Yeah, so every time I look at something, I'll think like, oh, if, it reminds me of like, for example, my family, right? That I should be putting in effort to create memories with them or connecting with them instead of like keeping this like little sticker. Okay. Yeah, think I have a, maybe a little bit sensitive question. Uh. You don't answer it, it's fine. But oh, sure. so the piano mm. reminds you of your mom. Yeah, but you can't fix like that my anymore. Family. Yeah, but I think like I could, like even though I'm like smashing down like her, her room she used to stay. Mm. Then I think like, oh, it's not, it's more that I miss her than the place. Yeah. It's not about the place. Because the place can be replaceable, I can like destroy it or whatever, yeah. but then that memory would be always with me. Ma. So as I was like renovating my house, then I tried to, I was so sentimental, so I just go take a video so I remember it, then mm. I <laughs> knock it down. Wow, that's so, so brave. It's so brave. Uh, yeah. So I've cleared all my shit. But Good then job. right, when I put downstairs, I a plastic bag or something, right? Then five minutes later, I come out, it'll be gone and like someone- Yeah, wow, like pastor is so good. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> <Don't come laughs> bro. anyway, I put my toilet bowl downstairs, right? It, it yeah. gone in like two minutes, yeah. disappeared. But actually, you still want to use it. <laughs> and I joined, a, like, fetish, I joined oh, yeah. a dumpster diving group on Facebook also. So they will post <laughs> where they find stuff. <laughs> And then people really go to the location. Ah. It, they're really, really not bad. Because yeah. like, there was one time where I think we had a sink, right? And then there was like a part of the sink that this guy really needed. Like one of our neighbors. So we posted it and then the guy's like, oh my God, I've been trying to yeah. find this for so long. Can you please keep it for me? Then we were like, oh no, we just left it downstairs like one minute ago. Mm. Then he said, okay, I rush now. He arrived there two minutes later. It was gone already. Oh, oh my God. Then he God. said, it's okay, Lord, I'll try again later. <laughs> <laughs> it's them said. It's a whole community. Yeah. But I want to say, it's so because like, as someone who hoards and someone who is so sentimental, and like I really don't like change like right now my, <coughs> my room in my parents house and the room that I used to live in before I moved in with Ned right is exactly how it is mm. like the last 10 years and like whenever my parents want to like change anything I'm like no no no, no please please mm. please like leave it exactly as is yeah, yeah. you have issues lah. I really do attachment issues lah, for yeah. the most part yeah huge yeah. huge no amount. but I think if I didn't have to <laughs> renovate <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't have to renovate my house right mm. I would probably do that like I would want to keep it yeah, yeah. yeah. just to like oh wow this is my old but then that's great but because yeah, no, like it forces yeah. you to really reflect on, on, on these kind of things right exactly mm. like events like this yeah and now like I guess with the new space also, I think it gives you um, like a new, almost like a blank canvas to create new memories also. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I want to say something about the letters though. Like I always, I always get very sentimental by letters or cards or like notes from like people, right? Then I realize you, you as a recipient, you get to read it like once every few months and you remember those words, right? But the person that sent it to you probably don't remember like two years from now, three years I'm from sure. now, sending it or even what it was inside. But it doesn't matter. Right? To yeah. me, it was more of, it's for me to bring myself back to that memory correct. That moment. Mm. Correct. But to me, it's just like, it was just such an eye-opening thought to realize like, if your relationship has changed with that person and you're still holding on to that letter, which is just a snapshot of what they thought about you mm. at that point of time, it is so outdated. Mm. Like, and that actually has helped me get rid of quite a lot of like old letters. Mm. Yeah, I threw it all yeah, away. Oh, okay. not all. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but yeah. do you know the most interesting thing I found? <laughs> is I found my umbilical cord. <laughs> Yours? My, Yo. I think it's mine. Because I think, okay, I found my umbilical Yo. cord, like ah. dried up umbilical cord in a Jollibee Ang Pao. Like last time Jollibee used to be like the first ah. ever Jollibee or something. It's like Chinatown there. Like them long ago in a small little Ang Pao. I found my... Wait, is it in the fridge or something? No. No, it's just okay, like part of like the jewel, like a jewelry, jewelry collection. Are you sure <laughs> it's your umbilical cord? Yeah, yeah, maybe it's like some like... Maybe one no, day your no. mother want to make like <laughs> chakwe, I don't know, what, yeah. what's no, that no, called? Chakwe chak. Because it looks like dried mushroom. No, I found my first tooth also. <laughs> How you know? Actually. No, so, so my, my mom Murder like- Murder has no, taken place. So there's a bag of items that is related to me when like my first 
year like mm-hmm. celebration. Ah, okay, okay. So it has my little chain that I had on my uh, foot Ankle. when I was a baby. What the hell? This yeah. sounds like a horrible the, crime, no, no, like, You were chained by the foot. No. <laughs> you, your, your umbilical cord extracted or something, body part. You had your tooth extracted from you at one years old. No, no it's just my memories that my parents decide to keep like, yeah. you like, know, a little, like, little chinklet. <laughs> Now it's like, oh my god, this is that gross. <laughs> I didn't throw it away, by the way. I didn't throw away my umbilical cord. Yeah, 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 you shouldn't. I kept it. You for for eat what? It, right? Boil. Yeah, they say boil. <laughs> it no, it, it shrivel up, right? So it looks like a little mushroom. That's exactly it. Yeah. <laughs> it's very it's disgusting. No, isn't it smelly? <laughs> huh? Isn't it smelly? No, it's dried it's up dry. already. It honestly just looks like a bit of skin. Like you right now, right? You just feel some skin. Oh, you also have that? Uh? I said I have my son's one. Uh. Uh, see? <laughs> it's normal. And, like, People still do it. Freak out. <laughs> no, like after two weeks, right? It already, already looks yeah. like super black and disheveled and mm. dried. Imagine yours like 30 yeah. years already. It's like rough. It, Toy it's a bit uh, furry. <laughs> Furry! <laughs> like, the, like the dust. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, this type of thing need to keep in like a vacuum yeah. seal. Like that's yeah, yeah, yeah. something lah. Yeah, like, 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 like a fresh, you know? China hydrate it every year. No, the Jollibee Ang Boy is fine. I'll take a picture. Okay, okay. Oh. okay. I missed out on the Dan Baby episode, right? Hey. Where I, da I, Baby. And I haven't da met Oli yet, right? I also haven't. Oh, uh, oh says, yeah. you also haven't? Yeah, that day I work from home. Okay, so I think at the moment, he just turned nine weeks old. So mm. I'm at that stage where we refer to his age at weeks. Oh, nine weeks. And it'll be like that for Two the months. next 36 weeks. <laughs> 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 it's just easier because like quite a lot of his progress, right, is actually based on weeks, oh, not months. No so there's a lot of parents always like um, use weeks instead. BBL has been great. Um, so like I shared in the previous episode, like Ned and I take turns with shifts. But um, so we, we, we do like, we have eight feeding shifts. I do four, she does four. But ever since I started work again, she now has to take one more shift. So mm. she does five and I do three. Wait, sorry, when you say eight in a day. Yeah. So he, he eats once every three hours. Mm. So you divide 24 by three. Wee. Why for the child must it be every three hours? Um, I think it's for different reasons. Again, like this is an amalgamation of things that I might read on the internet. I can't remember whether it was official sources or blogs or whatever, but this is like where I'm at right now, right? Or where we are at right now is that um, it's more or less conventional wisdom that um, (laughs) for a certain age, so like for example, the first four weeks, it's this amount how many times a day? Okay. There's there's like cables. And so like even even the hospital, they they are the lactation expert consultant Uh. gave us like a booklet and then you have like, they give you for the first four weeks and then after you have to go and like look up yourself. Mm. So um, there is a certain amount of MLs that he should be eating a day. And if you want, it could be every two hours. So then it becomes like, 12 shifts or like 10 shifts or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then if you decide to do every three hours to space it out, then it's about eight times a day. Three is already the most spaced out it can be based on what you've studied. After after two months, you can try for like six shifts a day, uh, sorry, six feeds a day and then you just up the intake law. So at the end of the day, it's about the daily intake. So Mm. actually it's more about the max capacity at any one point of time. So now the capacity is lower, hence the multiple feeding times. And as the child grows, then the capacity increases. So Precisely that. Better windows. Precisely that. But also, it's you. You cannot just force the entire day into like two meals because his stomach is also quite Explode. small. Oh. Yeah, and <laughs> so it, it, comes, only... it comes out like soon. Oh, immediately. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it, <laughs> there's he, very little yeah. distance to cover. No, it's actually quite fast. Like exactly what I listened to, right? Like mm. right after his feet, he will pee that liquid already. And then sometimes if he shits, right, it will shit almost like instantly. And it's the same thing that comes out. Okay, you can see it. Like what goes in comes out exactly the same? No, like, no, like. It comes out as shit and pee. Like the pee is like yellow or... Oh, he can like only ye- consume milk now? Yeah. And and so are you doing the the pure breast milk or, or formula or mix? There are a lot of people that believe in pure breast milk. And I think according to the UN um, or the U- or UNICEF, I can't remember. Like, like, like no, the WHO, WHO, obviously WHO. Yeah. <laughs> but WHO is under UN. UN. No, no. Um, according to them, you should try to do pure best, breast, best feed, best feed. The best breast feed, feed is, breast is the feed. best feed. Pure <laughs> breast feed for the first six months. But... Oh. It's also quite difficult because when he latches onto a boob, you don't actually know how much he's consuming. Mm. So net 
pumps. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. pumping is a lot easier because you get to put it in your mm. picture and mm. then you pour it out and then you get to measure and then and all that. But pumping right. pain, oh. if pumping is pain. Yeah. And, and, and for Ned, it's like we go out or whatever and she hasn't pumped in like six hours. Like she's like, I really, I don't know what the sensation is like, but all I know is she is at the point of, I really need to pump right now. How yeah. do you I think know he's hungry? He'll cry. La. Um, yeah, so he has a certain cry that we begin to recognize being slightly different from like diaper wet cry or like. Oh. What's the difference? Try, try, try. So you try the hungry you try the cry. Hungry cry. Hungry! It's hungry! So, <laughs> <laughs> they like them obvious. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Um, when he's like diaper wet, right, there is a certain pattern. So like he will, it will be very like quiet at first and the eh, eh, is like a bit more like stretched out and uh. he will kick his legs. So like you can tell like he's uncomfortable at the the nether region. Oh. Okay, okay. Oh, no that's not, not that's as he's pooping. Then he's trying to let the shit out. That kind of thing. Oh no no, that one different. Oh. So when he's actually pooping or peeing, right? He's like a tot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's damn shook. He is damn shook if you think about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause I, I've seen it before. Like, <laughs> there, there's been so many times already where I open the diaper, then he decides to pee extra, right? Yeah. Yeah. So he pee every. And when he's peeing, quiet. So it's like he crying, 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 crying. Then cry again. Uh, so that's quite cute. Whereas for like the hungry cry, um, it's more of like a. Uh, <laughs> I I cannot la. Demanding. You you can just tell like I think that there's less kicks. It tends to be around the 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 three hour checkpoint. So it's almost like (laughs) forward. It's the same. Oh different. The other one is And then, okay, okay. <laughs> do do the two. Eh? Eh? One is poop pee. The okay. other one is hungry. You do the two. Okay. See what we can identify. Okay, okay. the first one is okay. the first one. Poop poop hungry. Yeah. hungry and hungry, then the no, second hungry. one. <laughs> 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 it's more stretched out. I feel like I feel. Like, I feel. <laughs> but I might be wrong. Maybe that might be record. record. <laughs> then we put the video here. See what the two or not. No, but it's not just that. So like, I'm obviously I'm making the yeah some, but there's also the yeah or there's also the. <laughs> <They're> the <pterodactyl. laughs> no, but there's been a recent one, right? That I, I, uh, like we both can't really figure out. So, like, um, I, I think it's because he has his senses are becoming a little bit more refined now. Like when you start off, a baby has blur vision and it's all black and white. Then yep. slowly, like the focus is coming in, the color is coming in, yep. the sounds are coming in. So then, um. I think when we when we met the doctor and we said like he's been crying at random times of the day, she said like he, okay he's getting used to the new sen- the senses oh. sensory experience because he's suddenly like seeing things and going oh that's what it looks like or like uh. hearing things now so like so sounds that's like crying but actually he's saying like. ah no he's crying but he's oh. getting overwhelmed by oh. senses oh. yeah 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 what's the cutest thing he does to you uh he falls asleep while his stomach is on me like 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 flat down on me on my yeah. chest and like that's quite nice and also the second thing is when you feed him right whoever he feeds he very respectful he'll give you full eye contact Aww. so like whenever i feed him right and sometimes i would just be like looking straight or maybe watching the mm. tv and i look down i was like oh shit he's, still like, he's, he's just staring at me i'm like oh okay i, I won't watch tv let's just stare Aww. at each other Aww, Aww, so cute. So cute. Like, wow it's damn short <laughs> Wait, when that happens then he break eye contact <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know if I'm reading into it, right? Because it could really be coincidence, but it happened way too many times today. There's been times where he's supposed to be asleep. Like, I lay flat <laughs> and then he sleep, right? Then I walk away. When I come back, right, I see him, his eyes open. Then he see me, right? Then he close his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> So cute. <laughs> I'm sure like cannot be la. Cannot be. He's still too young to know this. Shit, before that, he actually texting. <laughs> <laughs> he actually can talk full sentence. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think a question for you is how do you think he has changed you so far? Wow. And I had a conversation where like <laughs> for a period of the last six months, right, we've been spending on the house reno, we've been spending on Oli, um, we've been spending on like maternity hospitals and all that, right, that we haven't been spending on ourselves and we wanted to just reward ourselves because this was the first time mm. that we had no big payments required. Okay. And so that we did that. Nice. Um, but obviously, I think there's a bit of negatives which I we did kind of address with the episode in net where there are times where you, like if he's crying non-stop for like half an hour and you've tried everything, one is that you question yourself as a parent, like am I flawed? Like am I not able to do this? And you really question like maybe I just wasn't cut out for this in that brief half an hour. Oh, that's scary. You know, and then suddenly, all of a sudden, he just quietens down and then everything's okay again. And you go, 
this is the most beautiful. Like you really swing, like the swing is crazy. But he actually side eyeing you and like, okay, I broke him. <laughs> <laughs> Enough. Mission accomplished. <laughs> yeah, 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 but then, but then the, the moment he's like- He's so creepy though, he's like, wah, wah. Okay. <laughs> you, you, you had enough like, um, but yeah to, to, to go from like oh my god what am I doing I'm useless to oh my god this is the most beautiful baby in the world and then suddenly feeling like guilty for feeling all that frustration mm. yeah you know and, wow. and, and just feeling all of that right you really lose track of time you lose track of days I just realized that I haven't actually hung out with my friends in damn long but mm. I didn't realize how long it was because every day you're going through these small little like mm. battles and, and with see, yourself yeah. Yeah, almost. Yeah. As much as I want to, I don't have, it's not that I don't have the time, I don't have the mental capacity and energy to, and energy to do anything else other than look after him at this moment. Mm. And it's, it's a mixture of I want to, I have to, I need to, and I have to do it so that my partner can rest. It's all these different combinations, but also includes that I obviously want to spend time with my child. So mm. it's so many things with these things combined that it's so hard to communicate because people might think of like, oh, you're only doing this because you have to now or you're forced to. Yep. But there's elements of that. I completely acknowledge yep. it. But there's also elements of I want to and I don't know how to communicate that Mm. that what, struggle what then you know? do you think a solution could be is it like can you invite your friends to your house and hang there instead for sure like and, and I'm more than happy like, and, and they have they have like um, come once in a while and it's, it's really nice to like to like see but I think like you also know that there's always a cost yeah mm. yeah you know to tie it back to my personal experiences yeah. right? like like I did recently go on this EBC trip right but within that I think when I was evaluating it, as much as it is a crazy adventure and it's such a it's such a something that's so different and outside of my normal life, right? I think the thing that brought about the biggest change was actually my like the relationship. Oh that I, yeah, yeah. And oh, which, I will, no, yeah, which I will get hey. more into. Ah. But what I want to say is that I can relate to you in a sense that when something so big and some such big change happens right, and comes into your life, right? It's you are going to experience a lot of change because there are going to be things that you, you're permanently going to be different about your life, mm. yeah. right? I think there's comfort in knowing that eventually everything will settle in place nicely yeah. and that there's no need at the moment to really like force it or push everything that happened at the moment because then what happens is that either something breaks or you break. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we've caught up with everybody. So stay tuned, like, share, subscribe. And if you have any girlfriend. questions about individual life updates or experiences, mm -hmm. you can let us know in the comments down below. Or, 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 or talk Telegram. to us on Telegram. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sk okay. QR code right here. Cool. I came back to this new set. Yes, right? I didn't did. really get to see it. And it was a big jump from the old office, but honestly quite happy with how it turned out. Yeah. And the vibe of it feels... Makes me feel more like I'm having a comfortable conversation yeah. versus mm -hmm. the previous set where we're a bit. It's like a classroom. Further. Yeah, because that's why it was two tables. And, and too formal, right? It yeah, felt formal. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Now I feel like I'm just Cozy. hanging out and talking to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's the wooden table from Green Sanders. Thank you. Shout out to Green Sanders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it really feels like it, it creates this warmth, this bond. Maybe not. Maybe <laughs> not. <laughs> no, like everything is a lot more like warmer. Yeah, right? yeah I'm just gonna move and, on. And at the start, right, I was complaining about this, right? But actually, once I get into the correct position, mm. uh, yeah, it's yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is a take a seat, right? Yeah. yeah. Take a seat. Thank, Thank you, you. Take, take a, a seat. seat for oh, okay, this okay. ergonomic chair. <laughs> like I know it's full of plugs and branded messaging, right? But if you guys had the opportunity to watch Denise and Alison do the Thank you, great and Thank you. It's a fantastic <laughs> ad. <laughs> it was, it was. It was it, like and on one got thing. promo code for all this also. Yes. yes. We yeah, leave okay, in okay, our okay, description down below. I don't mind getting one.